Come on, let's give God some praise in this place on today. Amen. As we get ready to prepare for ourselves for worship, amen, let us get ready to pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you for all that you have done, that you're doing, and that you're about to do for us. Father, we pray, God, that you would be in this place like never before. We pray, God, that we will feel your presence like never before, God. God, we came here today only to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Father, be in this place, God. Set your, set your spirit in this place, God. Be in everything we do, God, from the song, God, to the word, God. Let somebody's life be changed. Let somebody's life be set free. Let somebody's life be delivered, God. And God, when it's all said and done, we're going to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you, God. We adore you, God. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God.
on, continue to give God praise. For we serve a mighty God, and he's worthy of all the praise. Glory and the honor. Come on, continue to give God praise right where you are. He's worthy. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our strong tower. He's mighty in battle. There's no God like our God. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. Just where you are, if you will raise your hands to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. On this morning, we come to give God praise because he deserves every bit of our praise. God, we bless your name for you are holy and awesome. We're going to cry with the angels. We live. We live. Our voice. Our hands. Let's sing that again. We lift up our hands. Our hands to the King. And the Lord of Lords. We lift. We lift our hands in praise to your name. We lift up. We lift up our voices. We make a joyful noise.
Well, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the service of the Lord on today. I pray that as you are worshiping the Lord with us and magnifying our Savior, that you are encountering him. You know, I don't like to just, you know, do worship and do praise without having an encounter with the Lord. And I pray that even on this day, the first Sunday in the month of July, that you are having an encounter with the Lord. Let me, let me read a verse of scripture to you. It comes out of Psalm 89. It says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever with my mouth will I make known the faithfulness his faithfulness to all generations for I have said mercy shall be built up forever thou faithfulness shall be established in the very heavens I have made a covenant with my chosen and I have sworn unto David my servant thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Then the, the, the psalm shifts a little bit and it says, the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thou faithfulness also to the congregation of the saints. So this morning I ask that would you take a moment to just be, to do what the heavens are doing and praise the wonders of our God. Come on. He's been faithful to us. He has blessed us in so many ways. He has done so many great things. And I just ask that you would help me to give him some praise. He's been faithful to the congregation of the saints. Ah, yeah. He's been keeping us doing so many great things. And so we give him that praise. We give him that glory. We give him that honor on today. Listen, I want to welcome you to the service of the Lord. As I said earlier, it's the first Sunday of July. And, uh, you know, we want to welcome all of our first-time guests. If this is your first time tuning in with us, you know, take a moment and comment down at the bottom and say, hey, this is my first time. We would love to just say hello to you and thank you for coming in and worshiping the Lord with us. And God bless all the members of True Vine on today. Thank you for coming in and sharing with us. Uh, in our worship encounter. This being the first Sunday, I got to do this because I don't want nobody coming after me, uh, whether it's virtually or, or whether it's physically. I want y'all coming after me. But this is the first Sunday of July. We want to celebrate all of our July birthdays. Happy birthday to you if you're celebrating a, a birthday during this month. We pray that you have a real enjoyable month just lifting up and praising God and enjoying all the free stuff that, well, may, you know, you're too scared to go to the restaurant now. But anyway, I hope you have a great, wonderful time um, celebrating your birthday and all of our anniversaries. If you got married during the month of July as well, we celebrate with you. We clap our hands and I don't know how many years it's been, but, you know, maybe you want to put it down at the bottom. Let us know how many years that you've been married to that one that God gave you. The Bible is, the Bible is, is, is still working. The Bible is still working even when it comes to marriages, okay? That that man and that woman would come together and cleave to each other and they shall be one flesh. And so the word of God is still working. So we thank God for all of you that are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries during this time. Uh, we're in the month of July and uh, we're already halfway through the year. Think about that. Halfway through the year. I hope the next six months is better than the first six months. That's just me. Um, I know some of y'all saying it wasn't nothing wrong the first six months. Praise the Lord. Uh, I love your faith. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, but thank God for the last six months of the, of the year. And we pray that God will certainly be blessing us and doing great things uh, during this particular time uh, as we continue to go out th uh, throughout this 2020. We pray that you'll continue to stay safe and blessed by God in all things, okay? Um, before I get to a little worship, you know, before I preach, I want to talk to us about giving on today. I want you to take a moment and I want you to give unto the Lord. And since, you know, we're not meeting today in the sanctuary, uh, we need everybody that can uh, to respond virtually uh, throughout giving. Now, you know that we have our uh, our Givelify app, and certainly you can uh, give through our Givelify app. If you downloaded the Givelify app in the past and you favorite True Vine Ministries, would you just take a moment and 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 give a hundred dollar gift to the Lord? Because this is our first fruit Sunday, and I know you might go, "Wow, y'all still doing that?" Yeah, we still doing that because we still yet believe that God will bless us even through a time like this as we sow into the kingdom of God. So yeah, we're gonna ask that you would give that one hundred dollar gift. You can give through Givelify. You can give through PayPal. You can give through the various means that may be on the screen at this particular moment, but give unto the Lord. Honor the Lord with your giving, and as you give unto the Lord, the Lord 
always gives back to you. I'm out, I'm out of the old church. They taught us, they taught us this. They ingrained it in us that you cannot be God given no matter how hard you try. And this is the part that stuck with me. The more you give, the more he gives to you. And so I want you to just trust that and believe that. And as you give that first fruit offering on today, God bless you for continuing to be a supporter of the work of the Lord here at True Vine Ministries as we continue to do great wonderful and magnificent things for the Lord. Let me share something with you just as before uh, we go further is uh, one of the things that coming into July, for the last five years we've worked um, a homeless shelter here in the city which is called the Hope Center. For the last five years we've been engaged in it and involved in it. Uh, 2015 uh, July we began working in it. Well we just now uh, transitioned out of that particular ministry and made way for another ministry to come in and to work and to do um, the homeless ministry. Not that we're saying our hands are off of it. No, when, when they get it cranking up and rolling, we'll be the first ones that go down there to volunteer and say, hey, how can we help you out? Can we give you some assistance? Can we give you some wisdom and stuff like that? But over the first of those five years of, of doing the work, um, we have been privileged to be able to serve the, the homeless community of our city in, 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 a, in a way that I think God has been pleased by. So I just want to uh, take a moment moment and appreciate all of you that have been a part of helping us to do the work because we couldn't have done it without volunteers. We couldn't have done it without our two directors. First of all, Tony Stewart, who did it the first, uh, I think the first three years or so, and then Kenneth Hartley that came in the last two years and, and, and uh, was the director, and then all the volunteers that were there feeding, uh, helping, you know, whatever you did. Hey, I want you to know as your pastor, I really appreciate your work in this endeavor. And as I say, we're not pulling our hands out we got a lot of stuff that we're going to continue to have our hands in but we're also looking for other areas um, to work in in our ministry as well but again thank you for what you have done it has been a privilege uh, to serve our city in such a way so now let's get ready for the word of the lord let's get ready to hear um, from god on this morning and i'm going to ask you to take a time just a moment before i begin to share the word of the lord with you just take a moment and, and just worship god just honor god just just let them know how much you appreciate um, how uh, magnificent, how wonderful, how awesome he is, and all the things that he does. Let's, let's just worship the Lord. Come on, bring your family around um, and, and, and let your babies even know at this moment that we ought to worship our God and just honor him for his greatness, for, his, for, for, for being there when no one else was there, for making ways when no one else could have made ways, just, just for the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, he deserves this. Come on, he deserves this. He deserves this. Yes, Father, I just want to worship you. Come on. Simple song. It just simply says, You are holy. Oh, so holy. Come on, you know it. You are holy. Oh, so holy. What a privilege and an honor. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne to be called into your presence as your own come on if you know it sing it again come on you are holy oh so holy you are holy Oh, so holy. What a privilege. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. Then I like this part. You are faithful. You are faithful. Oh, so faithful, you are faithful, oh, so faithful, what a privilege, what a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. 
to be called into your presence as your own. Now, come on. I just want you to take a moment and just worship him for his faithfulness to you. Come on. Come on. I want you to remind yourself of God's faithfulness. When God honored the word that he spoke over your life. When God manifested the promise that he gave you. Come on. Would you just worship him? Take a moment and just express your thankfulness for his faithfulness. Because I believe that every time he's faithful, that we ought to thank him for that faithfulness that he's given unto us. Come on, let's worship him one more time for being such a faithful God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. You are faithful. Oh, so faithful. You are faithful, oh, so faithful. Come on, would you tell them what a privilege? What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. Say that again. What a privilege. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne one more time what a privilege what a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne to be called into your presence as your own come on lift up your hands you've been you've been called into the presence of the lord because he knows you at his, as his child. Come on, yeah. Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Come on. Thank you for being a faithful God. Come on, if he's been faithful to you. Hallelujah. Father, I worship you right now. For being faithful to my family for being faithful in my finances to being faithful to my in the area of my health father i thank you for being a faithful god hallelujah 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 come on give him that worship just for another moment i'm about done but come on give him that worship father you are faithful and we give you all honor we give you all praise now in jesus name we pray amen and amen god bless you today amen i tell you what i love every opportunity that i get to worship to adore to glorify and to magnify god now let's get into the word of the lord let me share um, with you on today um, as you know i've been spending the last few weeks with you sharing in a series about the faithfulness of God. This series is a series, if you will, unto God. It is, it is entitled, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness. And as we've talked about the faithfulness of God, I've tried to give a few definitions or descriptions of, of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the faithfulness of God. God's faithfulness, one of the things that I like to share with you, is that God's faithfulness is perfect loyalty and consistency in being true to his name to his character and his word so when we're talking about God being faithful we're saying that first of all God has perfect loyalty and consistency he's not up and down he's not all around no he's got perfect loyalty and consistency and when he's doing this what he's doing is that he's displaying it because he's being true to his name he's being true to his character he's being true to to his word. One of the things that I, I, I shared, I think, during the first particular message is how that the scripture tells us that we can be unbelieving and we can be uh, not even be faithful, but yet God will remain faithful. And the reason why he does it is because this is a character issue when it comes to God. It is about God's character. Another definition or de demonstration of faithfulness is how I've used this term that, that the faithfulness of God is his attribute that displays his trustworthiness based on his unwavering commitment to his people through his promises. I hope you call all the his's in there. I'm going to read it to you again. It's up on the, you, you, you're reading it as I'm saying it. Look at it. The faithfulness of God is 
his attribute that displays his trustworthiness based on his unwavering commitment to his people through his promises and covenants that find their ultimate fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. So the ultimate fulfillment of the faithfulness of God is seen through the person of Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, I wanted to share with you this morning some words of Jesus uh, concerning how he speaks to his his followers about being faithful to them. So go with me um, to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, and I'm going to look at verses 18 through 20. You're very familiar with these verses. This comes out of the King James Version. It says in Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And now here's where I'm really going to dive into. And it says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And he drops the mic and says, amen. And so again, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end end of the world. Amen. So this is probably, as you know, uh, at the end of Jesus's earthly ministry. He's about to leave the earth and, and take his position as a intercessor at the right hand of the Father. But just before departing, Jesus needed to share a word with his disciples to ensure that they were clear on what to do next, okay? Now, on the basis of his authority and power, Jesus was sending his disciples out to spread his message throughout the world. He, they were going to go out and they were going to go into all nations and they were going to be uh, responsible for making decisions. Now, in any missional endeavor that the Lord gives us, the size of the opportunity will be intimidating because he never gives us anything that we are not intimidated by because when God thinks about things, he thinks about things at a great level at an astonishing level and when he begins to speak it to us in our lives we go my god am i supposed to achieve all that am i supposed to do all that but 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 as jesus gives them and shares this thing with them the uh, the thing that I, I love about uh, um um what he says to them is that there is a truth that i don't think many of us understand that no christian should be burdened by the concept of impossible no christian should feel like that whatever Whatever God just told them that is impossible. Now, brother preacher, why would you say that? Well, the reason why I would say that is how Jesus introduces to them the task and then what he says to them as he begins to unveil what's really important. So Jesus wanted them to know about the mission, but he also wanted them to know that he was going to be faithful to them, that he was going to be faithful to him. So here's what I want you to understand. When the Lord is with us, it makes the impossible possible. Uh -huh. Whenever the Lord is with me, whatever I could have thought in my mind was impossible because the Lord is with me, now it makes it possible. So now I'm not burdened by the concept of impossible because I know that the Lord is with me. And if he was able to say, let there be light and there was light. If he was able to say, let there be the heavens and there was the heaven. If he was able to say, let there be the earth and there was the earth. Those were impossible things. If he was able to do that, then certainly whatever task that he may have given to me, that as soon as I realize that he is with me, the impossible becomes possible. So here it is. In their mission, the disciples could be assured of the continual presence of Jesus himself. The words with you powerfully echo the name of, of, of what Jesus was said to be when he was going to come to earth. They said that there was going to be an Emmanuel that would be with us here on earth. And as you know, Emmanuel means God 
with us. And so that is who Jesus really is. He is God with us. He's faithful to being with us in every scenario and situation that may occur in our life. He is God with us. Excuse me, I'm getting happy. So, so notice now in, in that verse um, that I read, 28, um, the verse 20, notice how Jesus, when he gets to talking about, um, getting ready to tell them about the fact that I'm going to be with you, I believe Jesus got really happy. Now, I, I can't prove it. This is just in my sanctified imagination. He got really happy because he uses the word low. He uses the word low. The word low is an attention-getting word. It is, it is comparable to, to any time when you get ready to tell somebody something. You say, listen up, or you say, look, okay? It's letting them know um, that, 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 that the listener or this get ready to hear something important. And so when Jesus says to them low, he's getting their ears perked up to hear something important. So Jesus says low, or look at here. Uh, Y'all from the country, you know what I'm talking about. Say, look at here. I'm with you always. I'm with you always. I'm with you always. Now, this I'm with you always has its roots in the Old Testament. It really has its roots in the Old Testament. Now, Jesus, of course, is the express manifestation of God on the earth, and he displays the same characteristics and attributes of his Father. So God in the Old Testament continually tells and reminds his people that he is with them. He in emphatically tells them in, in, in terms that they, they can understand. He puts it this way. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's look at a few examples of this, and then I'm, I'm going to let you go and, and eat some hot dogs and, and hamburgers or whatever you're doing. I know some of y'all don't celebrate the 4th. You already celebrated Juneteenth. I get it. Okay, but, but let, let's look at some of the examples here of, of where God is emphatic. He's emphatic about the fact that I'm going to never leave you nor forsake you. First, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Y'all know I'm crazy. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse number 8. I'm reading out these verses out of the English Standard Version. Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, It is the Lord who goes before you. Mm. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Let me tell you what's going on in this verse, just in case you don't know what's happening in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Joshua has been chosen to take over the leadership reins of the nation of Israel. Moses has done a phenomenal job. He's done a great job. He's brought the people to the threshold of going into the promised land, and now Joshua is getting ready to take over. And so here in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 and 8, Moses is given Joshua Joshua a pep talk because every time we take on a new endeavor we need a pep talk I, I, I know you might be saying I got it but no all of us need a pep talk every now and again and again so the pep talk that 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 uh, Moses begins to give to Joshua he tells Joshua he says it's the Lord that is going to go before you and he's going to be with you but then he gives him this instruction that he will never leave you nor forsake you in other words God's going be so faithful to you that you can go wherever you want to go and try to do whatever you want to do, but God is not going to leave you nor forsake you. Hey, let me pause for just for a moment, and I just feel like giving God some praise, and I'm going to tell you why I want to give God some praise, because God was with me in some places where he shouldn't have went with me, but he went with me anyway because of the promise of his word that he'll never leave me or forsake you. See, y'all trying to act like this is just a scripture about being in church. Y'all trying to act like this just a scripture about when you lift it up in the spirit. No, this is a scripture when sometimes you drift out of the will and sometimes you do some crazy stuff. He yet still promises that I won't leave you nor forsake you. I won't depart from you, neither will I abandon you. See, one thing about God is that God is never a deadbeat dad. Mm -hmm. No, he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. He won't let us down. When he makes a promise, God will come through with that promise. And, and, and that's just the God that we serve. And so Moses wants to depart this into the life of Joshua. Joshua, you got to know he's not going to leave you and he's not going to forsake you. Now, after the death of Moses, because I told you I had several scriptures. After the death of Moses, God himself, God himself goes to Joshua to give Joshua the same word that Moses gave to him. Look, this is Joshua chapter 1, verse number 5. Moses is now dead and they're, you know, they're down there. They're mourning the death of Moses, but God is ready for them to move. 
okay? That's a word for somebody and that's listening to me right now. You're mourning some stuff, and God is saying it's time for you to move. Stop mourning over stuff that you can't change. It, it's, 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 it's not going to do. It's not going to make anything any different. God is saying now it's time to move. So here is God. He shows up to Joshua in Joshua 1 and 5. Again, this is the English Standard Version. It says, no man, listen, Joshua, God Almighty, I got, I got excited. I, I'm, about to, I'm about to appropriate this verse for my own life. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Boy, I would love to preach that part, but this part I got to get to. Just as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And here it is, same word from Moses, uh, coming from God. He says, I will not leave you or forsake you. I will not leave you. And so I'm just, I'm just trying to paint the picture here. I'm just trying to show you how that when Jesus says over in Matthew 28 that, that, that lo, I'm going to be with you always, it is the same type of word that God consistently gave to the children of Israel to let them know that he was not going to leave them and he wasn't going to forsake them. Matter of fact, there's a similar scene that plays out in the life of David, the King David and, and, and his son uh, Solomon. David was going to be succeeded uh, the, uh, by Solomon. Solomon was going to take his place on the throne and and, and, and Solomon was going to be the one that was going to build the temple that David wanted to build, but God rejected his offer to build the temple. And so, so, so David had to give Solomon a pep talk. He had to give Solomon a pep talk, just like Moses gave uh, um, Joshua a pep talk. And let's, let's, let's peep in on the conversation real quickly. It's 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. I'm almost done. I'm excited, though. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. It says... There, then David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong, be courageous, and do it. I wish I had time to preach on that part right there. Be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God, even my God, is with you. And here it is again He will not leave you or forsake you until the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. Did you hear that at all? David says to his son Solomon, man, just do the work. And when you do the work, you don't have anything to be afraid of or dismayed about because God is going to be with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And you're going to finish the thing because God's going to stay until you finish the work. There's a word for somebody right there. I need you to get that word. God ain't going to leave you and let you go until you finish the work, until you finish the project, until you finish what he's given your hand to do, until you do that ministry, until you put yourself in a position to honor God by doing that thing. God says, I'm not going to leave you until you finish the work. Now, there's something that just caught my attention as I was studying this is that after Solomon actually finished the work, after Solomon actually finishes the building of the temple, he is completely overwhelmed by knowing that God has been with them, didn't leave him or forsake, or forsake him as he did the work. But he wanted to keep the presence of God going because I think Solomon heard what David said, because David said, God's going to be with you until you finish all the work. That wasn't good enough for Solomon. So I want you to check this out in 1 King chapter 8, verse 56 through 58, where after Solomon finishes the work, now Solomon's got something to say. He, 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 so when you get to verse 56, it begins by saying, blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel. That's him finishing the work. According all to all that he promised, not one word has failed. My God, God, my God. Not all, one word has failed of all his good promise, which he spoke by Moses, his servant. The Lord, our God, be with us as he was with our father. Now check out what Solomon asked. May he not leave us. Yeah, I finished the work. May he not leave us or forsake us. Verse 28, 58, excuse me, that he may incline our hearts to him to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, his rules, which he commanded our fathers. So I want you to notice the faithfulness of God. When Solomon says, you know what? I finished this work. I've done it. God is, he did what he said he was going to do. Now we've got this thing done. But God, I don't want you to leave me just because I got this thing done. I don't want you to tip out on me just because I got my project done, just because I got the building done. No, God, may you not leave us or forsake us. 
See, the presence of God is, is, is a reassuring reminder that God has not forgotten his promises that he has given to us. It conveys a feeling of certainty that whatever God said to my Moses, God's going to bring it to pass in my life. Because I've got some Moseses that God promised some stuff about me, and God's going to bring it to pass, and his presence is a feeling of certainty. His faithful presence is the guarantee of the promise of his word. So let me finish here. What is interesting about Solomon is that he is saying that the presence of the Lord, I hope you caught it, caught it in verse 58, the presence of the Lord will incline our hearts to God to walk in his ways and in his statutes. So this is what Solomon is saying. I just finish the project but God I don't need you just to be with me in the project I need you to be with me after the project because if 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 I just do the project while you're there and all of a sudden you're not there then I'll go my own way and by the way that's the problem with a lot of people a lot of people after they finished up now they don't want any connection with God and fellowship with God and they find themselves in particular um, predicaments by the way if you read the entirety of the story you'll Solomon you will find out that that's what happened to him here he is praying a good prayer but he did not allow the Lord to stay with him because you find out that he began marrying women that served other gods and Solomon allowed them to set up temples and he began to worship at these other altars and this caused him to fall away from God but if he would have just stuck with the presence of the almighty God who was faithful to be where with them then he would not have felt fallen. So here's what I want you to understand. A successful spiritual walk cannot happen without the faithful presence of God. You can't live it without him. I can't live without him. I know you were raised in church. I know you know how to preach. I know you know how to sing. I know you know how to do all these things. But a successful spiritual walk cannot happen without the faithful presence presence of God and I am so glad that God has been faithful to maintaining his presence in our lives so let me get back to Jesus in my closing in the book of John okay so the gospel story comes to an end if you will with the life of Jesus but Jesus gives the disciples this breath breathtaking promise that he is going to be with his follower all the days to the end of the age. In other words, the disciples are not going to be left to serve God without him being with them, okay? So here's something, here's something else I want you to notice about the story. Jesus said to them, he, he, he said to them, I am with you. He didn't tell them, I'm going to be with you. He said to them, I am with you until the end. And so this is the thing. You don't have to ask God to be with you. God just going to be with you. He's going to hang out with you. He's going to be there. So he's wanting you to know that I'm going to be with you. Now, with all that being said, here's some application. Because I got to give you some application before I let you go. Okay, before I let you go, got to give you some application. So why is he faithful to be with us. Okay, so remember this whole scenario that I don't set up here beginning in Matthew 28. Jesus is giving them the what to do next. I need you guys to go into all the world. I need y'all to preach the gospel. I need y'all to baptize. I need y'all to make the, the um, disciples. Uh, I, I need y'all to do all these things. And so, so, so if they're going to be successful, he's got to be with them. But here are the three things I want to tell you as I go and, 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 and move on from this message. For, number one, Okay, here's the thing about his presence. His presence keeps us focused on his purpose. His presence keeps us focused on his purpose. His purpose for these disciples were to go throughout the world, to preach the gospel, and do all these things. Well, his presence with them was the thing that was going to keep them focus on his purpose. I appreciate the presence of God in my life because the presence of God in, in my life always keeps me focused on the things of God. It keeps me focused on, God, what do you want? What, what is it that you desire? What am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be achieving for you? But, but there are times, and I got to admit this, okay? And so listen to me, because what I'm already talking about is, is, is something we experience. I'm not talking about it is a truth of the gospel, because the truth of the gospel is he's always with us. But some 
sometimes we feel like his presence is not there. And many times when we feel like his presence is not there, that's when we get off track. That's when we start doing all kind of stuff because we, we are so addicted to the presence of the Lord. And I don't think that's a bad thing, by the way. I know a lot of people think that's a bad thing. But we are so addicted to the presence of the Lord that when we don't sense that particular presence, sometimes we get out of kilter and we try to figure out things on our own. But when we know that the presence of God is there, it keeps us focused on his purpose keeps us focused on the purpose. so I appreciate the presence of the Lord so when he says I'm gonna be with you I know now I can focus on his purpose number two okay number two number one his presence keeps us focused on his purpose number two his presence keeps us operating through his power it keeps us operating through his power remember if you, you probably forgot when I began reading it is that Jesus said listen all power on, and, on earth has been given unto me and so I've been given the power then he says to them I hope you caught it he, he says to them I got all this power now go ye therefore Okay, so what is he saying to them? He said, listen, my presence with you is going to keep you operating in my power. It's going to keep you working in my power. It's going to keep you achieving things in my power. It's going to be what helps you to overcome the enemy. It's going to help you to bring down strongholds. It's going to help you to defeat the habits that you got in your life. It's going to help you to live without bowing down to sin. It's going to help you. Yeah, the presence of God is going to help you to operate through power. And let me say this, if you don't mind, I think that's one of the things that we lack in the church and we lack among many of us as believers is that we are able to operate through the power of God and the reason why is that a lot of times we don't stay committed to that presence of God that is right there just saying tap into me and I will use you in a great way and so his presence keeps us operating through his power always used, like to use the verse at this particular moment of how Moses said to one to God on one occasion he said Lord if you ain't going with us to go fight the battle we ain't going you know why because he understood that the power was in the presence of God. And I believe that we need to get more of the presence of God back in our churches. Let me preach this for a second. We need to get more of the, it, it, people always wonder about where is the power of God? Because I think we counterfeited the presence of God. We made the presence of God a good shout and a good dance and good music going on and then that makes everybody say, surely the Lord is in this place. That don't mean that the Lord is in that place. I could go anywhere and the music get to hopping and getting real good and it'll cause anybody to have a, 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 an emotional response to that. Some of the things that we've made God God are emotional responses to a moment. Oh, I just got in trouble. Uh, don't don't tune me off. I'm sorry. Okay, but but but, it, but we get more of the presence. We 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 spend more time allowing, and then put it this way, allowing the presence of God to manifest itself when we come together. Then we'll see more of the power of God. We'll see more people get healed. We'll see people get delivered. We'll see people get set free. We'll see people have breakthroughs because of we will begin operating through his power. So number one, his presence keeps us focused on his purpose. Number two, his presence keeps us operating through his power. And then number three, and I'm done, his presence allows us to produce positive results. His presence allows us to produce positive results. What am I saying here? Did you not you know that the entire church that we know of was began by these 12 characters, these 12 disciples that went out with the presence of God in their life and went out through the known world and began to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with these people and their lives begin to change. See, when we have the, the presence of God in our lives, it will allow us to produce positive results, positive results. God won't let me fail. God won't let me quit. God won't let me do anything that will not produce a fruit. Okay, you, you know, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you've read in John 15 that when Jesus says, he says this with, that, that I've chosen you, that you might go out and bear fruit and that your fruit will be made. You know what that is? A positive result. That's him saying, I'm going to be with you. You're going to produce a positive result. Because also in that same chapter, he said, listen, I'm in you and you're in me. We, we're together in this. And it always produces a positive result result and so this is the faithfulness of the Lord to be with us just to be with us he says lo I'm with you until the end of I'm just there I'm look for me I'm right there I'm just there and as his presence is with us we can be appreciative that that presence will always keep us focused on his purpose it will keep us operating through his power and it will keep us producing positive results 
And you might be saying to me, well, Pastor, I'm looking for some things to happen. I'm, I'm looking for the results to come. They're coming. Don't give up. They're coming. You're going to see positive results because the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Do not allow the devil to shake your confidence in your God. Your God is with you. And he's going to prove it. You're going to see positive results. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word today that begins with Jesus giving a task to his disciples to say to them, I got something for you guys to do. But don't worry about it. It's not going to be impossible because my presence with you is going to make it possible. I want you to go into all the earth and I want you to preach the gospel. Change people's lives. Lord, just as you were with those disciples, I know you're with each and every one of us as believers. And you are faithful to be there with us. Whether it's in a location or whether it's according to duration. Whether it's in a place or whether it's you needing to be there at a time. Lord, thank you that you are with us. And I pray, Lord God, for each and every one that's listening to me right now. That they would begin to confess in all things, in all places, in all circumstances. I know that the Lord is with me. He's faithful to be with me. And his presence is going to keep me focused on his purpose. It's going to keep me operating through his power. And it's going to help me to produce positive results. Say that again. Positive results. Produce positive results. And I thank you for it now. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank God for his word. Great is the faithfulness of our God. And I pray today that as you heard the word of the Lord being shared with you, that you've come to that conclusion that God is a faithful God and that he's with you in all things and he's blessing you in all things. And I pray that the word of God will take root in your life and bring forth great fruit. Hey, God bless you today. I ask that uh, God just continue to um, bless you in every endeavor, everything that you put your hand to do. I pray it will be blessed. Um, don't forget that next week, next week, uh, we'll be back in the sanctuary. Now, during this particular time, we're only doing one on-campus service. That one on-campus service is going to be at 11 o'clock. So we'll be back in on next week. If you want to come and be a part of it, please do so. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable yet returning to church, that's fine. You know, join us like you joined us this morning. We'll see you on uh, one of our live platforms. But until we meet again, God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name. I pray that you have one of the greatest weeks of your life. We'll see you again next time.